name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the incredible discovery about Europe's possible oldest known megastructure that was discovered near the German coast in the Baltic Sea. This discovery was published on February 12th in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, or PINAS in short. So back in the fall of 2021, a group of scientists and students from the Kiel University in Germany were operating a multi-beam sonar system from the research vessel RV Alcor on a student trip some 10 kilometers, which equates to roughly 6 miles, off the coast of Rerik, Germany, in the Baltic Sea. The multi-beam sonar system spotted a surprising rope stones located 21 meters, roughly 69 feet, under the waves, and the researchers aboard the research vessel alerted the Mecklenburg for former State Office for Culture and Monument Preservation to their find, and an investigation began to determine what the structure might be. So diving teams and an autonomous underwater vehicle were used to study the site at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. The discovered row of stones apparently stretches for nearly one kilometer along the seafloor in the Bay of Mecklenburg. The row they spotted turned out to be a wall that's averaging a height of approximately 45 centimeters, which equates to roughly 1.5 feet. No, the wall isn't that high, but still important and quite the discovery nonetheless. This wall is made from 1,670 stones, of which some 1,400 were small stones positioned in a way that connected the nearly 300 larger boulders. Many of these boulders actually seem to have been too heavy for groups of humans to have moved them. So yeah, these large boulders may have actually been left behind by glaciers that have moved them across the landscape. And, you know, as the glaciers melted, the boulders would have been placed in their current positions. And, uh, yeah, as they seem too large for humans to have moved them, it seems that the hunter-gatherers placed the small stones in between the large boulders to connect them, and thus create a wall. The researchers believe that the wall, which is given the name Blinker Wall, dates back to at least 10,000 years ago, and became submerged around 8,500 years ago when sea levels were rising and Doggerland disappeared underneath the waves. Yes, people, surprise, surprise. This was another bit of Doggerland that was lost to the water in ancient times. And if you don't know what Doggerland is, that's fine. I've actually made a mini documentary about it and I'll put it as a card in the upper right corner for you to watch. So how were they able to date this submerged structure, you might ask? Well, to be honest, this really was incredibly difficult to date for the researchers. They first had to analyze how the region had evolved to determine the approximate age of the wall. Then the researchers had to collect sediment samples, and after that they created a 3D model of the wall and virtually reconstructed the landscape where it was originally built. After the last ice age ended around 8,500 years ago, sea levels rose significantly. Not drastically all at once, as some people might like to claim, but still significantly over the period of a few hundred years. This sea level rise would have led to the wall and large parts of the landscape surrounding it being flooded and eventually submerged. But around 11,000 years ago, the climate of Northern Europe was vastly different in the midst of the Ice Age. So there wasn't a big population of people living in Northern Europe at the time of 11,000 years ago. Uh, and this population lived a nomadic lifestyle. There are some numbers going around on the internet about how many people they think lived in Northern Europe some 11,000 years ago, but I don't know all the sources. I really haven't looked that much into it, so I'm not going to name any numbers, sorry. Not a big population, that's what we do know. So the population that did live there lived a nomadic lifestyle, as I just mentioned. So they followed the herds of reindeer as they migrated seasonally through the post-glacial landscape. It's difficult to understand the reasoning behind the construction of this wall, and of course we unfortunately can't go back in time and ask these hunter-gatherers who created it why they are building it. Would have been nice if we could. Not only 
Is this impossible because we don't have a time machine? I'm still waiting on that flux capacitor, guys. I mean, chop chop, work on it. But also we can ask them because we probably don't even speak their language. Their language would have been vastly different than the languages that we are used to nowadays in modern times. But damn it, I still wish we could just, you know, ask them. It would have been so much easier. The investigation by the researchers indicate that a natural origin for the wall, as well as the construction of it by submarine cable laying or stone harvesting in modern times, are highly unlikely. One of the main reasons for either of these two scenarios being unlikely is the methodical arrangement of the nearly 1400 small stones that connect the large non-movable boulders. But the researchers do have an idea about why this wall was created. So they suspect that it served as a driving lane for hunters in pursuit of herds of reindeer. So as they chased the animals, the animals would follow the structure as animals like reindeers are known for jumping over them. I mean, damn, that's so easy. There uh, may have been a second wall that ran alongside the buried blinker wall that's currently buried in the sea floor sediments, but there is no evidence pointing to this as of yet. For now, there's just this hypothesis that a second wall may have been created. But the researchers are indeed of the opinion that the blinker wall acted as an artificial bottleneck, either with the lake shore, as you can see on the picture on screen, or with a second wall running alongside it, although that's as of yet, there hasn't been any evidence of a second wall, like I just mentioned. But this bottleneck made it easier for the Stone Age hunters to kill the reindeer more easily with their weapons. They may have even guided the reindeer into the lake. Reindeers really are slow swimmers, and so they may have waited in their canoes, waiting for them to just enter the water and kill them with their spears. Stone Age hunters from around 10,000 years ago used spears, bows and arrows to catch their prey and all of these weapons are much, much more effective from a close range. This discovery changes the way archaeologists and anthropologists think about the highly mobile groups like hunter-gatherers because for them to build a massive permanent structure shows that they're much more location-focused and territorial than previously thought. The scientists are continuing their investigation in the Baltic using sonar and sounding devices, as well as planning future dives to search for archaeological finds. So by combining the expertise from the fields of marine geology, geophysics and archaeology, discoveries like these are made possible. Other undiscovered treasures at the bottom of the Baltic could potentially shed light on these ancient hunter-gatherer communities. There is evidence for the existence of other stone walls at other locations in the Bay of Mecklenburg, and these will be systematically investigated as well in the near future. And I'm excited for all of this. Like, this is really awesome. This may be the oldest structure in Europe created by humans. So what do you think of this latest discovery from the Baltic Sea? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then we have to change that. Click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I mean, just keep watching. I've made a lot of videos on this channel, and I would love it if you watched more than just this one. I would also like to say a massive, massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It truly means the world to me. And uh, yeah, this was a quick new discovery video while I'm working on four larger videos. Yay. Large videos, I really don't like making large videos because they take so long to research and script write and uh, don't even get me started on the filming and the editing process of all of that. But yay, more long videos in the future, near future, yay. But for now, this is it and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.